In this video, I'm gonna show you how to start with Mars, which is our MIPS assembly and runtime simulator. So if you look at your screen, I've got Mars pulled up. It's Java, so it should be cross-platform as long as you have the Java runtime environment. So you can download it from Canvas, I put it up there, or you can download it from the site directly. Now Mars, as the name implies, is for MIPS, so that's the assembly language we're using. It's an assembler, so it'll actually take the instructions that we write into it and convert them into the machine language for us. And finally, it's a runtime. That means we can actually run the programs on there. Generally, an assembler just takes from assembly code, which is source code, human readable source code, and converts it into machine code. But it doesn't actually run it. That's the actual operating system's job is to run it. Well, because we don't run on MIPS, where this is an Intel computer that I'm running this on, we have to simulate it. And so that's what the runtime simulator portion is for. So Mars is fairly straightforward in how you actually implement and run it. But what we're going to learn in this class is how the assembly language itself works. But this is going to help us do that because this will give us sort of debugging tools in assembly. Assembly is going to be a lot harder than C++ in terms that you are comfortable with C++ in a manner of speaking. So what I generally tell my students is develop your logic in C++ and then translate it. Because essentially your job is not to be an assembly language programmer, it's to understand what's going on. Why does C, or essentially when I take C++ and compile it, what is it going to become in assembly? And this matter of factness, what we're trying to do here is to see, well this is why we program it this way instead of that way because in assembly we're going to get this versus that and then we can build it for efficiency, memory, capacity, that sort of stuff. So if you first open it you're going to see a screen that looks something like this. All of your registers are on the right hand side. So inside of a computer we have what are called registers. It's the fastest memory that we've got but it's also the smallest. You'll notice that that's our trade-off. As memory increases in size its speed decreases. As its speed increases the capacity decreases. So they're inversely proportional or related to each other. So in this case, we have these registers. They're all prefixed with a dollar sign. That's how the assembler knows it, that it's a register. And they have different names. So like T0 through T7 are your quote unquote temporary registers. A0 through A3 are your argument registers. So whenever we start writing functions in assembly, that's what we're going to use. V are your return. I don't know why they have a V in there instead of an R or something like that, but it's an expression of value that's return. S are your saved registers. We'll, we'll discuss the difference between saved and temporary registers a later time. And then we have what's called SP, the stack pointer and RA. All the other registers you're not going to use. So zero you'll maybe use, but it's hardwired to zero. It's always zero. If we write something into it, that uh, value is discarded. And if we read from it, we're always going to get the value zero. AT is what's called the accumulator. We don't use that. So it's reserved for the assembler. So to get started, what we're going to do is we're going to go into edit mode right here. So you'll see there's two tabs. Execute, this is the machine code that the MIPS assembler and runtime si uh, simulator will actually show us. And then the editor right here is actually how we write the code. So I'm going to click this new button right here, or you can go to file new. And that will bring up MIPS 1 to ASM. ASM obviously stands for assembly. So in this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start writing some assembly. Now, the purpose of this video is not to show you how to write assembly. It's so that you can navigate your way around here. So I'm going to write some things that you probably don't know yet, but hopefully you'll understand what it's doing later. So the very first thing, so let me show you what the, the three things that we have. So number one, if we want to comment, we put a, a pound sign. So this is a comment. You'll notice it turns it in green and it italicizes it. Then we have what are called directives. That is, starts with a dot. So the dot, we want to go into what's called the text section. The text section is where we store CPU code. It used to be called, well, it's always been called the text section, but some people have tried to rename it to the code section, and it hasn't stuck. So it's usually the text section from there. Then we have what's called a label. So number one, a comment starts with the pound sign, right? Then we have the, the dot in front of it. Those are the assembler directives. And then we have what's called a label. And a label is a name followed by a colon. Now, this is how functions are written in C++. So in old C, we would actually take the name of your function and that would become an assembly label. So int main would actually have M-A-I-N colon as the assembly. Remember, the whole purpose of a, 
a C++ or C compiler is to take C language and convert it into assembly. So I'm going to write main here and put a colon. Notice it turns it into dark black and italicizes it. So now what this means is a label just labels a memory location. All this is a program that will get stored in memory. And then we just start from a certain location, like in C++ we start in main. In Mars we start at the top and work our way down. And all we're going to do is start running instruction after instruction. So I'm just going to do a couple of instructions here. So LI stands for load immediate. Let's use temporary zero and I'm going to put negative 1000 in there. Okay. So an immediate value is just like an integer. So it's some literal. Uh, it could be positive or negative integer, but it has to be an integer, not a float. And so what's going to happen is the same thing as saying T0 equals negative 1000. So that's what LI does. And then I'm going to do add I stands for add immediate. Remember once again, the immediate is just some literal number. So I'm going to go do T1, T0, and then 100. Okay. So what this is essentially looking at is T1 is equal to T0, the value of T0, plus 100. Well, we know the value of T0 at this point is negative 1,000. We're going to add 100 to it, so we should get negative 900. Now, you'll notice there is no printf, no scanf, and things like that. Instead, we have to use what are called system calls. Now, the nice thing about Mars is that we can go to help and actually click on system calls right over here. So this will actually give you all the instructions it, that it supports. Now, be careful because there are what are called pseudo instructions. And you'll notice that L, A, L, B, L, D, all this sort of stuff, there's a lot of pseudo instructions. And essentially what a pseudo instruction is, is the assembler will, it, the CPU does not understand pseudo instructions. Instead, the assembler takes those pseudo instructions and sometimes what it does is it needs to have two instructions to actually perform that operation, like L, I, load immediate. It's not a real instruction that the CPU can understand. And so instead, what the assembler will do is it'll transform it into something else that the, the computer does understand. So let's take a look at syscalls. So generally what we have to do is we have to refer to the, the operating system to get services. So whenever we do printf, what we do is uh, C++ will put all that text together and then ask the operating system to output it to the console. And essentially that's what we need to do because remember this is our runtime simulator. So we don't have the Windows operating system behind the scenes. We have Mars's operating system running behind the scenes. So I'm going to do this one right here which is called print integer. So I want to print the integer. So I put and notice it says code in V0. So I'm going to put the value 1 into V0 and A0, the register A0, needs to be the integer that we want to print. Okay, so remember V0 is 1, A0 is T1. Okay, so I'm going to do VI and we're going to move into A0 the value of T1. Now, if we were better at register selection, I could have used A0 all the way from the beginning, but I didn't. Okay, so what move does, it just moves. Now, it says move, but it's actually copy. So T1's value goes into A0. So essentially, this is like LI, except both parameters are registers. So this is A0 equals T1, okay? And then what I'm going to do is a syscall to issue the system call. Now, the nice thing about Mars is as you start typing out an instruction, it starts popping up with information like sub. Here's all the, sub, the instructions that start with sub. Now, be careful again, because this will also include your pseudo instructions. Okay, so now that I've created this, we have to save it. So I'm gonna go do video test. There we go. So you have to save it somewhere because whenever it reads from the file, it has to assemble it. Okay, now we're going to click on this button right here, the wrench and the screwdriver, or you can go up to run and click assemble, F3. Okay, so I'm gonna use the toolbar. I'm gonna click that and notice what it's done. So right here is the memory address that these are going to be stored in whenever we start running it. Then what it's done is this code right here, CODE code, is actually the machine language that this assembly has converted into. So our load immediate actually became add IU. Remember I said LI is a pseudo instruction. And so what the MIPS assembler and runtime simulator actually devolved it into is add IU. Stands for add I immediate unsigned so if you remember unsigned now notice it converted these into numbers dollar sign eight dollar sign zero every single one of these registers has a number associated we generally refer to them by the v0 a0 but you'll notice that eight is t0 
So that'll be important when we encode and decode instructions because we're putting zeros and one inside the computer. So V0 is not a zero one. Instead, we're going to take the value eight for T0 and we're gonna encode it using five bits. So notice here is the entire program now in machine language. So this is what's called the data segment and we'll see what that actually means later, but we can change that by clicking this down right here. We can look at the heap, we can look at the stack pointer and all the other stuff and then the text. And that just gives you a memory overview, but here's all registers. So once again, here's the name of the register, the number, and then finally the value. So right now nothing's in there because we haven't even started running our program. So there are two ways we can run our program. We can run it to completion. That's what this green play button does, or we can run one instruction at a time. And that helps us with debugging because I can run one instruction. Notice that T0 turns green. It says, hey, this just got a value or the value inside changed. And it's gonna be FFFFC18. If we were to actually decode this, remember it's a negative number, we do the two's complement and we're gonna get 1000. Now, because it's a negative number, that makes it negative 1000. Now remember, we talked about sign extension versus zero extension. This, obviously, sign extended, that's why we have FFFFF, that sort of stuff. So it's sign extended negative 1000 into a 32-bit register. And that's one thing you'll notice is that every single register inside of MIPS contains 32 bits. Another thing about MIPS is every single instruction encodes into machine language that is also 32 bits. So every instruction in MIPS is 32 bits. That makes it easy whenever we need to encode and decode instructions. So I ran one instruction, now we're gonna run another. So the next one should put the value negative 900 into T1. Notice T1 right now is the value zero. So let's click the plus one. And notice we get C7C, which is the value negative 900. Now what I'm gonna do is load immediate V0, we'll get the value one. So let's take a look at V0 right here. Right now it's zero. And now it got the value one. So it's in hex, so make sure you remember that. <laughs> and now we're going to move the value of T1 right here, which is FFFC7C, and we're gonna move that into the register A0 right here. Okay, notice A0 got the value FFFC7C, now it's identical to T1. And once again, just because it's called move doesn't mean that it moves T1 into A0. It just copies it. And then finally, we're gonna run a syscall, which then down here, prints out negative 900. And so it's not like printf where we can say the number you gave me is percent %d and then print out negative 900. Nope, we have to instruct the computer and the operating system. So the operating system is the syscall, that's how we instruct it. And we instruct the computer by writing instructions, assembly instructions. And so that's how we actually run this program. So whenever you submit your labs and things like that, you're going to have to copy this video test.asm or whatever you call it and that's what you're gonna be submitting to Canvas. So MIPS will give you, or Mars will give you the entire path of how to find, find it right up here. So make sure you copy down, hey, this is where I know to get my files. So that was a brief introduction into Mars. I will show you in future videos whenever we do assembly and stuff like that, how to actually use it, use or how to solve problems. We'll be doing sorting, searching, things like that with Mars mainly because that's going to be our assembler. Now, what we want to do is we want to understand, we want to build our vocabulary from the instructions. Now, our integer instructions, they're floating point. There are branching instructions, that's like if statements, loops, that sort of stuff, and jump statements. We're also going to call functions. Now, a function inside of here, remember, is just a memory label. So let's recap, re <laughs> I almost said, never mind. <laughs> let's recap. Remember, if we put a pound sign in front of something, it comments out the line. It's like the two forward slashes inside of C++. Whenever we put a dot in front of something, that means an assembler directive. It's not an actual instruction that we're gonna instruct the CP to do. Instead, it changes how the assembler is going to do things. So whenever we do dot text on line three here, what it's going to do is it's going to take uh, all the code below, it's almost like public and private, so it changes the state and says, okay, everything I do until I change it needs to go in the text section. Remember, the text section is where CPU instructions lie. Finally, we have five, which is main colon. Remember, that is a memory label. And that just may, in fact, in this case, it's going to label what this memory address is right here. And if you remember, it's that four zero 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 zero. So that's all a label does. That way there we don't have to hand code in 0x400 in the keyboard because that might change. As we start adding instructions, you'll see the memory addresses change. And so to make that easier on us, we can use what's called a memory label. And that label will, is like a variable, will take whatever memory address it's, it's looking at. So there you go, that is MIPS and 
Well, let's recap the rest of it. So if you want to assemble, we click the little screwdriver and the wrench, or go up to run and click assemble. We can click the play button, that will run it to completion, or we can do plus one, and that will run it one step at a time. We can back up by using the left arrow, and then we could also run it by saying, I would always recommend run speed at max and then just do step by step. But this will run, like in this case, we do one instruction per second. So if I click run, it will run one instruction per second. So let's do 0.4, something like that. So let's rewind this and let's do play. So notice it's clicking in, it did the next instruction, it did the next instruction, and finally it's doing the last instruction. And we got negative 900 putting on. So that way there you can actually see what's going on because your computers are much faster than we can see. If I went up to run speed at max, we rewind, we click play, it's done. So that way there you can see what's actually happening inside your computer. Remember in green it will show you what registers changed, that sort of stuff. And so welcome to Mars. Thanks for watching.